We are back at Drupal Camp Bristol 2015 and it is still a pretty beautiful day. Not as quite as beautiful as yesterday was, but uh, still a struggle for me to get in and listen to conference sessions when it's actually a July day, sunny, dry and warm <laughs> in the UK, right? Absolutely. I think you've uh, probably hit the nail on the head there. I don't, we don't see many days like this in a year, so... Uh, yeah, your time is pretty good. We're making a big sacrifice for you, <laughs> open source. <laughs> so, yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. Welcome to the Acquia podcast, Drupal technology, community, and business. module for that? There, of course there is. Uh, Richard, please introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, tell us about your company and what you do. Okay, uh, my name is Richard Moja. Um, I'm a Drupal kind of site builder, developer, FEMA, kind of end-to-end -end stuff really. I work with uh, SMEs, so more, more smaller projects. Um, I've been working with Drupal for about five years. Um, I love I love the whole kind of community. I love I, love, I really enjoy my job. Um, pretty busy, um, yeah. So it's kind of a brief intro. Um, right. What's your company called? Uh, it's called Claritus. Um, the idea behind the name was clarity. Um, so I just made up a word which was, sounds very similar. Right. Um, Academic <laughs> Latin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, kind of you know, <laughs> you know the jazz. So. Um, and yeah. it's, a, it's a very small Drupal shop, right? Yes, yes. I mean, primarily it's uh, me. Um, I have one employee who's, who does project management for me. Um, and I, I use um, other developers as and when. So if I get something in that's probably not my specialist area, because I'm pretty much <laughs> generalist, then I will outsource that. Um, and I also work with a very good designer um, who... Who, you know, we kind of we, we kind of have a bit of a symbiotic relationship. So I work for him building sites for his clients and then vice versa. And we actually share an office, so we've got all that good stuff about kind of being able to wander over to the desk and you know look at stuff on the screen and, and that's that's right. really quite and you're powerful. Not, and you're not by yourself in an office all day either. That's true, yeah, that's that's quite nice, yeah. <laughs> so you've been doing the web pretty much since there was a web. When did you build your first website? Um, the first website I built was probably in about 97, just for my own personal benefit. You said in your talk before mm. that you had a, a long uh, run using proprietary software. Talk about uh, some of the things you did okay. pre-Drupal. Okay. Well, I came from before I, was, I, used, before I got into Drupal, uh, way back. Um, uh, I was working, I've done you know, a variety of jobs in IT um, in its kind of previous incarnation, if you like, in the sort of 80s and 90s. Um, and I did some work in the print industry as well. So I kind of kind of mixed the two between IT and, and design. And at that stage, they were very disparate. They were different disciplines. Um, you know, you couldn't be creative and work in IT. That just didn't work. You know, that wasn't wasn't really allowed. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so I kind of worked in, in different in different roles and different jobs, and then um, I did some basic brochure work and some IT stuff at the same time for a very small company with uh, three or four employees, uh, a two okay. operator in the UK, and I was doing that outside of my kind of print job. Um, and then um, basically they decided that they needed to bring the brochure in-house, which was quite a smart move in those days, the brochure production that is. So I, I joined the company to kind of uh, manage and produce the, the, the brochure, the company brochure, which at that stage was kind of 150 pages or whatever it was. Um, at the same time, I was kind of looking after their IT infrastructure of like four PCs. Um, and at this time, I was outside of work, I was kind of playing around with the web and stuff like that. And I kept saying to my bosses at the time, you know, we need to get a website. This is a tour operator. And they said, well, we don't need one. You know, that's, so I had this kind of discussion that went on for about six months. Eventually they said, yeah, okay, build one. 
So we built a website. So in 1998, what were they saying? We have a fax machine? We have a telephone? Yeah, that's how it what, works. We have a catalogue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You what is this good for? The way it worked was that, you know, uh, you'd, put a bro you'd put an advert in, in, in the press, people would phone up, they'd leave a, a request for a brochure, and then you'd send them a brochure. Then so they'd did, phone back and then they'd book. So how did you, how did you convince them to uh, um, go for the web? I just think they, they kind of... The, the, the rationale for not having a website was that, that no one had the internet. So, you know, the customer base couldn't actually go to a website even if you built one. So prior to that, um, and at, around that time, you know, the adoption was greater and stuff like that. So it just got to a tipping point where, yeah, let's just build a website and see what happens. And did that work out for them? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, obviously... Uh, we, we, we built the site in, in 98 using Cold Fusion and Microsoft SQL Server because um, at the time I didn't, I didn't know anything about the technologies I was going to use so I knew a bit of HTML and I'd be playing around with that but of course we had a, we had a, uh, a product base if you like so we, we, we were selling villa holidays so we had in the region of at that time I think 100 or 200 villas so it was literally my own itch was that I didn't want to recreate HTML pages so I looked for a more dynamic solution and that's why I got into Cold Fusion, mm. which is a very was a very nice kind of lead on from HTML. It's a it's tag based, so I can recognise tags and all that kind of nice stuff. And um, so then, and it was fairly painless to build the first site, you know. And did the did the web multiply their business? Um, yeah, we had we, we had a few issues um, without me knowing. Um, one of the, 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 the owners had managed to get uh, some cheap TV. So um, I kind of knew it was happening, but we just didn't really expect the avalanche we got with it. I mean, we went out on Boxing Day on some quite minor, I think we got a lot of good coverage, cheap TV. And yeah, just flattened the servers. Um, it was shared hosting. So <laughs> I, got a web, I got a call on Boxing Day from, from the web company saying that, you know, we've got 30 other sites on this box. And if you don't turn your site off, we're going to, we're going to shut it down because it's just flattening everything. So, yeah, that was, but that's a good problem. So, you know, on Boxing Day, we had to build a new server. Um, well, my hosting company built it very, very kindly, built it for me and, 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 and got us through that stage. But I think then straight away we knew that, you know, it's the way forward. Oh, we could make money with this internet Absolutely, thing. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I just watched over the next 10 years, nine years or whatever it was, the, the slow movement from business, from you know traditional bricks and mortar or phone line, so to speak, to the online channel. So fast forward to 2009, yep. plus minus. How did you discover Drupal? Um, well, the company got to you know from when I joined, there was four or five, six people, um, and basically the company was sold in, in 2008. Um, we then did a management buyout, um, which I was part of. Um, stayed there for another year. When I left, I could obviously I had the luxury then to sort of like look at the whole thing and say which one I want to go for. And we toyed with with Linux and we toyed with some open source stuff, but it just didn't really stack up for us. So that was where I looked when I when I left, and I sort of took a bit of time out. You know, I'd, yeah. Then I, and during that time, I kind of just did some research and came across Drupal, and um, and then they went from there. Really, I mean, it was it was a fairly quick decision. You know what? what whilst I was looking at the different uh, offerings of, of, you know, my decision was I'm going to build websites and how's the best way to do it. And, um, yeah, my conclusion was that Drupal looked like a pretty good option. So it was the first version of Drupal you touched? It was Drupal 6. Drupal 6. Yeah. So I was with that for probably, I can't remember now, but it's probably a year or so, and then I started building Drupal 7 sites. Compare building websites and working on the web now to back... 10 years ago, okay. and mindful of the fact that in your session today, you called the old days the wild, wild west of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the way we built stuff, I mean, it was very, very kind of fluid, very, you know, we, we didn't really get, get kind of hung up on, on um, we didn't worry about too much, you know, um, we just decided we needed a feature and we just went and built it. Um, I think... There was very little commodity 
functionality available at that Absolutely, point. Exactly. I really think the problem, you know, problem or benefit was, you know, there was a kind of a, obviously an ignorance because there wasn't the shared knowledge out there. And the team that, that were very in, insular and, you know, we knew our systems and we and we knew how to get the best out of them and that's what we did. But obviously the, the, the big contrast nowadays is that when you're using a, a platform like Drupal is that you've, you've got the, you can just leverage all this wonderful stuff that everyone else has done. And you know, it'd be quite interesting if we did this. We went through the same process now because we for sure wouldn't be, wouldn't have built half the stuff we built, or, or we built all of it. But you know, probably a good sixty percent of it would have been from the community. So after you chose Drupal and worked with it, yep. What made you stick with it all this time? Um, I suppose you 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 are a little bit invested in it, you know. Um, so you know, it's it's a bit of a kind of it's, it's a personal challenge to kind of get on top of it. And it, it's quite a it's quite a big thing to get on top of. So, you know, and I'm covering because I'm because I'm quite I'm obviously small. I'm I'm covering so many different areas that, and I've pretty much learned from scratch now because you know the, all the stuff I was using before. Obviously, there's a lot of commonality, but in terms of the way you do things, it, it's very different. So, um, you know, obviously I've had to learn Linux, PHP, you know, blah blah blah, and um, so that's taken time, but. I've always known at the back of my mind that it's going, I'm doing it the right way. So, you know, it really goes against the grain for me to, to use the wrong technology and a, and a kind of um, not a scalable solution when I know that Drupal's a more scalable solution. Right. Uh, and that's probably what's, what's, what kind of kept me going in terms of Drupal. So, so I'm interested in talking with you about outsourcing and, and scaling uh, mm. yourself. Yep. So. On the one hand, I think as a as a very small Drupal shop, um, mm. and you do have to cover so many areas. Yep. Um, how does the huge Drupal community, the module repository, the best practices all around open source on the web, how does that help you scale and multiply yourself? Uh, coming back to my talk, I found it incredibly difficult to find find good resource at good rates to do theming, for example. Um, right. So therefore, for me, using something like Foundation means that I can take pull myself out of it, and I can use something that's a bit more standard, with with the hope that you know at some point in the future I can find a resource out there that knows how to use Foundation, and I can bring them in um, to help me with projects. Right. So on the one hand, you described a uh, a, a tool set mm. that you've put together a whole selection of different open source tools yep. that help you get through all of the functions of your job, which is literally from uh, you know d development and site building through production and quality assurance, yep. and testing and maintenance, and and um, that was an impressive list. And then uh, after your talk, we got to talking about the idea that uh, Drupal as a project, we've decided to specialize in what we're good at mm. and outsource. Um, all the stuff that we're letting Symphony do, the ex external libraries. So we didn't rewrite the HTTP uh, request kernel. Yep. We let the Symphony take care of our routing, and so we sort of outside uh, added to our community, right? Sure. And then you said to me that Drupal the theming is still a dark art, right? And in a way, you're outsourcing a whole problem space to. Um, in your case, Zurb and Foundation to solve a whole bunch of problems for you so you can work in a standardized way, hand things off to other people, right? Yeah, sure. I think, um, uh, you know, dark art, it, it's a dark art to me, you know, probably to theme specialists, they'd probably take a different view on it. But um, I think for me, one of the issues specifically with theming is it's so close to, you know, with myself, you know, when I'm speaking to a client, it's so close to... Um, me talking to a client and then briefing someone else, you know, sometimes that becomes really inefficient to try and manage that kind of change management process, you know, with other people. And, you know, Foundation um, hopefully, well, it does, just reduces the, the amount of time it takes me to, to do theming. So, you know, I, I've got the luxury, obviously, as well of being able to steer a client towards a certain design and look. So, you know, for example, the designer I work with, he uses he uses kind of PSDs. He still works on Photoshop, which I've got no problem with. I think it's a great medium for a creative person. Um, 
and um, but he uses the buttons and all the styles from from foundation within within Photoshop, so that we can present to the client. So because you know at the end of the day, the client says, "Design me something." You know, and let's be honest. A lot of the time, with smaller clients, they they they're not they just want it to look good. They, right. They haven't got an idea in their head. So if you present them something which is clean, simple, and right. works. And you're f frankly, I think you're also working in a very budget conscious market space. Absolutely. Yeah. And the more reusability you can offer, uh, or or the more you reuse available elements, the better your pr price point for them. Yeah, right. exactly. Because and and your time investment. Absolutely. You know, that's, it is all about. Um, you know, if 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 if, I, if a project can be done in half the time, you know, it doesn't need a genius to work out the difference in profitability of the company. <laughs> so, but you know, some of the other pain points that you get for a small company like, like myself are um, are things like ch um, configuration management. Um, you know, that is a, one of the major ones. You know. Are so, you looking forward to Drupal 8? I absolutely am. Yeah, I think um, obviously that's going to be one of the highlights. Is is configuration management, you know, and um, uh, that's going to that's going to be really nice. Reliable, yeah, yeah, exactly. Clean deployment, absolutely, yeah. Um, not storing all your stuff in the database, putting it in code. <laughs> so, is is CMI the number one uh, new feature on your uh, for for you on in Drupal eight? Um, I think it's it's one of them. Um, I think having. Um, you know, having it, having a lot of stuff out of core is quite nice. You know, that that, that just that's going to help with with just conflicts and stuff like that. That's just uh, and just yeah. So I think yeah, probably configuration management at the moment, off the top of my head, is is the number one. Um, but anything that I can do, that's where I'm fo You know, I'm focused at the moment is trying to trying to make myself more efficient. You know, that's really my number one goal. Um, so stuff like I use um, Vlad, which is a Vagrant kind of you know, uh, project based on Vagrant for, for spinning up Drupal sites. Um, you know, want to get more into Ansible. Um, you know, I'd love to be able to do some proper CI, continue, you know, continuous integration. I talk a lot about empowerment in my job, and I talk about <clears throat> how Drupal, particularly, and open source in general. Uh, empowers people and generally when we think about empowerment we're talking about hey your community can can communicate with the world you can your cause can be benefited you can realize your vision you can build your company um, but I think I've just spotted another side to this I'll, I'll put it to you and you tell me if you think this sounds about right um, you're empowered to be a successful small business um, you happen to be helping other small businesses with your service, but you mm. are able to run a small business because open source is there for you, and you get these incredible tool chains, these incredible um, you know groups of other people that you can work with. I mean, effectively, you know, you're on a team of mm. twenty or thirty thousand people with mm. with other Drupal developers. Yeah. So, open source empowers you to use the same tool sets and be a successful business person, even at literally the smallest scale mm. one person working is yeah. that is that fair um, I think it is fair but like I say you know that some of those are, are really I'll turn it on, it on its head a little bit if you're working with a lot of smaller sites then the sites themselves don't need the tool sets that All right. you you're don't, talking about but you don't need to drive up with a with a Ferrari to go and pick up a bottle absolutely, of milk absolutely right? yeah 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 but um, I think you know the, the, my, my, my plan and my the way I'm Trying to build things is to is to act big, even though I'm small. Because unless I act big, then I'm not going to grow. You know, I've got to get the right things in place, and that's what it's all about. Getting, yeah. you know, to use a cliche, getting all your ducks lined up and but getting all those internal processes correct, um, so that so that you can scale. And I think you actually hit it on the head when you said it allows you to be efficient. Yes. You know, it's not about. Uh, Big or small, right now, if 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 a tool allows you to work efficiently and smartly, uh, that will work now, and that'll certainly work if you grow your company and grow yeah. the size of your project. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, I think um, you know. I suppose it's to use another an analogy. It's you know, if you look after the pennies, the pounds will take care of themselves. And yep. I think if you're building a small site and you've got good processes, then obviously when you scale, then you'll you'll continue to have those. Yeah, I was talking with someone else also um, in the same context about 
a, a Drupal site that was two pages accidentally um, got incredibly successful and it's now huge and 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 you know with literally uh, what was it uh, uh, 300 clubs and and tens of thousands of people involved in it you know and Drupal itself also scaled to yeah. meet that need so you've chosen a tool in that case that's right it'll grow with you absolutely I think that's a really good point because you know there are other systems out there that I could have chosen but I kind of saw potentially that at certain points they might start you know having issues and you know I don't want to be using one two or three build systems so I don't really want to be planning to build small sites forever you know so it makes sense to use the tools that are used to build big sites even though I'm building small ones right but yeah, every, every you know, every month that goes by, you know, finding myself, and these these events are great because you just pick up a new tip, and you know, if if you come and you can pick up a new tip that saves you a couple of hours a month, then you know, accumulatively, that that's a really good, <laughs> that's a really good saving. Okay. Richard Moja, give us your shameless plug. Oh wow, my shameless plug. Um, well. Uh, yeah, uh, my company is Claritis Limited. We, speci we specialise in smaller sites. We we like to think we can build sites in the right way, so that if if, if the client does grow, we can grow with them. Um, and you know, being small, it means we you know when you well, the person who picks the phone up is probably going to be the one who does most of your development. All right. Which, uh, that's probably the biggest benefit of being a small company. <laughs> so if you want that kind of service, snap him up. Before he grows. So yeah, it's uh, it's Richard Moja, R I C H A I D M O G E R on Twitter, and www.claritis.co.uk is my website, and I'm based in 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 Kent in the UK. Um, yeah, get me get in touch just to say hello. Great. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you, Jan. To talk to me, Thank and you, I really yeah. enjoyed your session today too. Thank you. No,